Nora Hannon, you've been found guilty of gross incompetence. Wait a minute, who the hell are you to judge me? Once again, you failed to get a conviction against Todd Manning that would stick. And for that crime, you're hereby sentenced to life. Bailiff. What are you looking at? Let's go. Hey, no, let go of me. Ah, let go of me. This is a mistake. What are you doing? Let go of oh, me. Oh, Nora. How does it feel to have your own lawyer tank your case? Give our regards to Lindsay. <sighs> You're going down, Todd. You're going down. I don't... I don't know what to do. I feel like my whole life is falling apart. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Let's get a drink. And you can get the chip beef. Are we celebrated? Yes! I just took a big bite out of Nora's case. Uh, all right, we still have more work to do. What? Well, the next step is yours. You know, Marty, you're really in for the long haul tomorrow, so I'm sure that nobody would blame you if you decided to just take it easy tonight and stay home. No. I have to do this. I can't concentrate. I keep on thinking of what might happen at that trial tomorrow. Or what could happen before that trial. You're under police protection, okay, ma'am? There's absolutely no way Todd Manning could find this place. Oh. Saeed, it's me. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, you're a godsend. Thank you. How's everything here? <clears throat> uh, our witness is getting a little bit nervous. She's thinking about backing out. Could be. All right, I have a visitor for her who might just help her keep everything in perspective. Come on in. No chance you're going on a field trip, is there? Uh, nope. It's my last night in captivity. I'm busting out. Totally weirded you out. No, you didn't no I out. did. I, and I, I promise you, I did not mean to do that. To start, obviously, you're upset. You need someone to talk to, somebody who will listen. I'm just wondering why you went to a teacher instead of your family. Because I, I tried to find Lyson, and I couldn't find her anywhere, and I don't think that she's going to understand the same way that you will. Understand what? How it feels to find out that someone was... Someone that you loved tried to hurt themselves. Like your mom and my dad. I need you to put in a call to your minions at the Sun. Get them to fast track a story for tomorrow's front page. Oh, was that all? <sighs> Relax, Hemingway. It's already written up. What's the lead? The Commonwealth star witness against you, Janet Kettering has a list of aliases and a rap sheet as long as my arm. Hatchet job, huh? We need to start discrediting her. Lee Halpern screwed a lot of people in this town. Uh, so if one of her victims comes up... It's not 
our problem. My only concern is winning this trial. That's fine, as long as you stay away from my daughter. Relax. I have no intention of arresting this daughter. So what is this? Is this, is this the war room, huh? I'm trying to figure out who else you can hurt. It's bad you hurt my mom. I'll have somebody come by first thing in the morning and relieve you, okay? Thanks. Hey, let me walk you out. So, um, I don't want to ever question you all at all, but, um, are, are you sure it's kosher for Marty and Janet to be talking? Don't, don't worry, okay? The DA knows all about this, and, uh, Marty's just here to make sure that we're all on the same page. So good to see you, Marty. I, I was so worried Save about... It. I don't want any of your phony sympathy. Well, there's nothing phony about the way I feel about you. You think I give a damn about the way you feel? You want to expiate your guilt? Get up on the stand tomorrow morning and bury Todd Manning. Because if you don't, I'll bury you. You, uh, seem... I don't know, like you're not so sure about getting out. No. No, it's it's good. It's it's, it's good. What? Um I'm not sure the outside world is ready for me. Why wouldn't it be? Look, you did the work you needed to do in here and then some. Yeah. You're facing your demons. You know, and you and you are too. You you're gonna get out of here. It'll anyway. happen when that happens. I just want to be as close to hundred percent as possible. Maybe that's what's bothering me. You know, I'm, I'm getting out, but there's still... You know, there's pieces in my life that are missing. And uh, I need to figure out what they are. I made a promise to testify against Todd, and I intend to keep that. Oh, forgive me, Janet, or, or Lee, or whatever the hell your name is. Your word doesn't mean that much to me. <laughs> Look, Marty, I... I know I have no right to ask for your... What, would it help if I told you how sorry I am? I allowed Todd to make you believe that he was something other than what he is. A rapist. My rapist. And you're not sorry for what you did to me. You're sorry you're out of a paycheck. No, Marty, you're that's sorry. not true. How much did I pay you to lie to me? Okay, I did. I did take money from Todd, okay? Because he hired me to take care of you, and that's what I did, Marty. I did care for you. You have to believe that. I don't have to believe a word out of your mouth. And look, I never meant to hurt you. What Please. did you think was going to happen? I don't know. I was going to skip off to Never Never Land with the man who gang raped me? And the baby you were going to help him steal? How exactly was that supposed to go? Look, Marty. You and I were friends. Now, you may not want to believe that now, but we were. We were starting over together. I was trying to be good for the first time in my life. And you were trying to recover. I, mean, I, can't, I can't even tell you how much I wanted you to stand up and get on your own two feet. And even if I had known that despicable thing that Todd did to you all those years ago, I really don't know if I would have had the words to tell you. How could I tell you that Todd raped you when it was so clear that you had fallen in love with him? Oh, look, we're just trying to enjoy a cup of coffee. You see, it sucks that you can enjoy anything at all, seeing as how my mom can't. Cole, I have nothing but compassion for you. I know you've been through hell, but making a scene in a public place is not going to make your life one bit better. So what? You, you're going you're gonna to have to excuse me, because I don't speak bitch. Hey. I don't uh, think so. I guess. You don't think so? I'm, I'm sorry. What? Did, did, did my language offend the rapist? Is that, is that what Cole, do you think your mother would be proud of your behavior right now? Say this again. You do not talk about my mom. You hear me? Seems like that was dark. Oh, oh. Come out of this stuff. You 
you gave me. Already. Yo, everything in moderation, bro. You're my hookup, not my friend. So cough it up. Hope you're able to get some sleep tonight, Nora. <laughs> sleep. Yeah, I factored that out a few days ago. Yeah, well, Manning. He's a felony waiting to happen. You don't get him this time. What, I get a shot at him in a year or so? You got a lot on your plate right now. You got uh, Marty's trial, Matthew. I can multitask, bro. You sure you have a case here? Well, I will if I can prove that Todd's actions were directly responsible for the death of the baby. Can you do that? If Star and Manning and Lee Halpern do their job, then yeah, I think I got a pretty good shot at sending Todd away for the rest of his miserable life. My dad tried to commit suicide New Year's Eve. I basically shut him out of my life, especially after what he did to Cole's mom. Everyone just turned their backs on him. I basically treated him like he was dead to me, but I never dreamed in a million years that, that I would make him want to do that. Hey, hey. Whatever your dad tried to do, it was in no way your fault. Yeah, but I didn't help. I didn't try to make his life any easier. And he, want, he wants to change now. I even saw him after he tried to kill himself. I didn't even know about it then, but he wants to make things right. Doesn't he deserve a second chance? What do you mean? I mean, maybe I shouldn't testify against my dad. If you weren't really together, would they be saying you're ready to blow this joint? I know. And they're not cutting you loose, right? You're set up with some sort of outpatient counseling. And you're good to go. I wish I had your confidence. Well, Sister Mary Claire says healing is a lifelong process. She's a nun. Everything for her is a life. <laughs> well, sense of humor, check. What if the professionals are wrong? Nobody expects you to be perfect right away. You're only setting yourself up for failure with all these doubts. Yeah, well, you talk a good game. Well, I'd be a pretty lousy friend if I didn't. Have a good night. crazy for even thinking about letting my dad off. Uh, well, what do you think? He was going to steal my baby. I don't even know how you begin to process something like that. But you know what? He couldn't do it. No matter how screwed up he was in his mind, he, he loved me that much that he couldn't go through with it. And I know that he wouldn't hurt my baby. So I... Uh, how can I send him to prison when he's trying to change? Well, let me ask you something. If you had to narrow it down to one thing, the reason you're testifying against him, what would it be? It was all about Cole. Because my dad raped his mom again and got away with it. But then the more that I thought about it, it was really about hope. I mean, she wasn't alive very long, but in the time that I had her, when I was pregnant, she was my responsibility, and I made a promise to her that I would never let my dad mess with her life like he did mine. And, and somehow I feel like me testifying against my dad, it's like making good on that promise, you know? It's like saying that she was here and she mattered. Does that sound absolutely crazy? No. No, sounds like you loved your baby. I do. Okay, so now why wouldn't you testify against him? I don't know. I think you do. Because I don't want my dad to die because of me. I don't want him to feel so sad and alone that he tries to take his own life again. God, you shouldn't even be in this position. Well, I am. My dad's nurse and I are the J's whole case. Um, 
Have they asked anything about my mother's involvement? Oh, Nora, up the DA. She said the judge said that they can't talk about your mom. Ah, I see. Well, I guess the reason I know my mom didn't help your dad is kind of the same reason you know your dad wouldn't have wanted any harm to come to your baby. And that is exactly why I think testifying against my dad is so wrong. But I owe it to so many people. And on the other hand, I have two little brothers who still idolize my dad. And they miss him very much. How can I be the one to take him away from them? All I know is you need to start listening to what your heart tells you. I'm sorry, I don't have better advice than that. But I can't put this on anyone else. I think you need to start trusting yourself because somebody doesn't agonize over something this much and not make the right choice. I knew what Todd was planning and I didn't know how to tell you what kind of man he really was. So you left me at the mercy of that man. Marty, you were so in love with him. And Todd... What? Loved me back? He believed he did. He believed it so much he wanted to take care of you and he would have continued to take care of you. So long as I believed his lies and yours. Please, I was only trying to protect you. You? Protect me? I trusted you and Todd with my life. And you stood by and watched while he violated me. Again. Again! Why should I or anyone else believe the promises you're going to make now? Because I realized what I had done when I looked at that grandchild of yours and saw the dead in that hospital. Mm. I will have to live with that for the rest of my life. So, tomorrow I'm going to get on that stand and I'm going to tell my story. And it may not have made up for all the things I've done to you. But it's the only thing I can do. You better hope it's enough to put him away for good. <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you mean, we? You don't trust me to do it myself? No, I don't. Come on. I'll go with you. It'll be fun. So you got it? That's it. I'm cleaned out. But that would barely last me a week. So cut back. How about I just cut out the middle? I don't think so. Come on. I'll still buy from you. I just need... Extra this week, all right? We're with the trial and everything. No, I feel you, bro. But but no way am I giving up my supplier's name. I'm just trying trying to stay healthy. Here. Come on, man. Come on. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to make do with what you got. I wish that I could just skip tomorrow, wake up, and it be the next day. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm gonna be there tomorrow. Really? Yeah, really. And that's whole future is in my hands. No one else's. Not even his. Hey. Hey. Something happened? Oh, uh, yeah. Just, um, came from seeing Janet. Lee, Copper. You okay? No. You want to talk about it? Hey, you ready? Uh, I'm upset. Dear Skyler, I have to tell you something, sweetheart. I entered into a shameful arrangement with a man named Todd. Manning. He's a horrible man who planned to steal his daughter's baby in order to stop her from allowing the baby to be adopted. 
This is an unconscionable act of cruelty. And he wouldn't have attempted it if I hadn't agreed to help him. I'm writing this in case it becomes public knowledge. I want you to know how this happened. Todd Manning found out you stole drugs from the hospital. He also knew I covered it up. And he threatened to expose you if I didn't help him. You were just putting your life back together and I couldn't bear the thought of that life being destroyed. So I reluctantly agreed to help him kidnap his grandchild. And when that poor baby died, I realized it was my fault. I was so preoccupied with what I'd entered into that I was careless with a child's life. I'm so sorry, Skylar. But I just can't live with that. defendant taken in early 2008 shows the defendant with his now ex-wife and three lovely children that's star that's jack and that's sam one big happy family right wow what a difference a year makes because you'd be hard pressed to find one of these family members who'd want to take a picture with him now not after what he's done not after the actions that he took that led him right here to this courtroom today Todd Manning found himself cast out of his family and alone until one day circumstances thrust upon him the opportunity to get revenge on everybody he believed had hurt him. You're going to hear about the defendant's bizarre plot to create a new family for himself, utilizing his former victim, a badly injured woman with no memory, and his own unborn grandchild. You'll hear how he attempted to perpetrate an appalling fraud on two unwitting teenagers. One of them, his own daughter. The other one, the son of the woman that he held captive. His plan was to steal their baby and have them believe that their child died. And he couldn't do it alone. He had help in the form of two accomplices one of them can't be here tonight because she committed suicide. But the other one will be here to testify to her role in Todd Manning's evil little plan. People will establish the means by which the defendant intended to destroy his own family so that he could create a whole new family. Free and clear. And finally, Mr. Manning's own daughter will repeat in her father's words, exactly what he was planning to do. Because he confessed it all to her. The defense is going to try to paint a picture of Mr. Manning as some sort of normal guy, you know, like uh, you or you or you. Uh, father, husband, family man, normal human being. But he's not. And while the defense is busy painting that picture, I'd like you to remember this one. This is the baby that Todd planned to steal. This innocent child died the night she was born. A victim of negligence from the doctor who brought her into the world. Because the doctor was too preoccupied to fulfill Mr. Manning's wishes she didn't catch a small medical problem that had she, and had it been corrected, would have saved the baby's life. This baby would be alive today, were it not for Mr. Manning. This is the picture I want you to remember. Is the defense ready with opening arguments? We are, Your Honor.
Todd Manning? He's no saint. No amount of PR can spin his history into anything other than what it is. But my client's prior actions are just that. History. Over and long since done with. Todd Manning has not been the man the DA's office claims he is for many years. He is simply incapable of the crimes the DA's office would attribute to him. Don't be fooled. This trial is not about the flimsy, unsubstantiated charge of attempted kidnapping. What we are dealing with here today is simply the latest in a string of charges trumped up by the Commonwealth to exact revenge on a private citizen that has long been a thorn in its side. The DA herself has lost innumerable battles against Mr. Manning. This is her chance to rectify that. The lengths to which she will go strain the conscience and strain credibility, quite frankly. Nowhere will this be more apparent than in the witnesses she brings before you. Now, the defense will show that those witnesses' testimonies, they simply don't stand up because they are lies. There's donuts in the bag if you're hungry. And I bought a couple of newspapers. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. The facts of this case are straightforward. Star Manning got pregnant. And her baby died shortly after being born. There was no kidnapping. There was no plot. There was only human error. And the instinct to find fault. And here is a person upon whom it is very easy to lay blame. But because it is easy, does not make it right. Because it is easy, does not make it justice. But don't be fooled. This case is not about justice. This case is a personal vendetta. The court will take a brief recess and then resume. All rise. It's a good line. I like that. The client was just going to be here. This case is going to be about managing expectations. That is what I'm doing. Well, as long as you don't manage my kid the way you're managing me. Okay. Would you have a beer delivered to unload? I gotta go. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you later, okay? Yep. Did you do that to him? How you doing? You all right? Yeah, whatever. You, um, you got a chance to see the paper this morning? No, I... Did you renew your subscription? <laughs> You're not going to get away with this. With exercising our First Amendment rights? It's like jury tampering. Please be seated. Court is now back in session. Your Honor? Ms. Delgado is using her client's tabloid to undermine the credibility of my witness before this trial has even begun. That is absurd. I demand a mistrial, and I want her removed from the case immediately. Your Honor, the DA's ridiculous charge is further evidence of the vendetta her office has against my client. Ms. Hannon, I am turning down your request for a mistrial, and Mr. Manning does have the right to choose his own counsel. Then I request that the jury be sequestered until a verdict is rendered. Agreed. Call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. A people call Detective Antonio Vega. Look, Manning's just trying to undermine your credibility before you testify. That's, you know, normal for him. Yeah, listen, don't you get it? 
I had people convinced I was dead. Now everyone I swindled could try to come after me. Detective Vega, can you describe the events that transpired while you were on duty on the night of November 14th? Sure. My partner and I were dispatched to 437 Jackson Hill Road under the suspicion that uh, Mr. Manning here was holding a woman prisoner. Dr. Marty Saywick. And is that what you found? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was clear that Marty Saybrook was traumatized and that uh, Manning here was under the need of medical care. So we arrested Manning and then uh, arranged it so that the both of them were transported to Landview Hospital. I stuck around to conduct a search. Oh, a search. Oh. And uh, is this the list of items that you found during your search? Yeah, that's my signature. All right. Your Honor, this has already been entered into evidence as People's Exhibit 1. Could you please read the lists for us, Detective? Sure. Thank you. Four boxes of baby clothes, two boxes of diapers, one case baby formula, one boxed crib, one unopened car seat, one map of New Mexico. Okay, okay, hold on a second. To your knowledge, Detective, does Mr. Manning have any children in his custody? No. Huh. No further questions. Thank you. Your witness. Thank you. Detective Vega, was Star Manning's name on any of these items? No. Oh. Was there any shred of evidence to indicate that these items were intended for Star Manning's baby? Well, kidnappers don't usually, you know, uh, tip off the target. Your Honor. Please answer as directed, Detective. Well, who else would the clothes be for? I'm so glad you asked. Your Honor, Exhibit A. My client's latest income tax return, in which he enumerates the thousands of dollars worth of items that he has already donated this year, in addition to Exhibit Z, a letter in which he stipulates that these items are to be given to an orphanage. And uh, was, your, uh, was your client's signature on there before or after he got arrested? That doesn't matter to the orphans. without saying goodbye, did you? I know you're anxious to get home to your kids. Well, my mom came early and she's checking out, but I had to see you. I, <laughs> I have a present for you. Happy same day. Oh, I, I feel bad. I, I, was, I was working on a basket for you in arts and crafts and it, it didn't turn yeah, out so Yeah, well. right. Well, you have plenty of time to whip something up for me for your own same day, which will probably be in a day or two. Then. Just open it, please. <laughs> Just in case Barb takes your other one. Yeah, she's been eyeing it. And you too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, call me when you get out of here, okay? And I will teach you how to throw a proper spiral. I like that. Your Honor, the people call Star Manning to the stand. Thank you so much for coming here today. I know this is very difficult, but we'll try to get through this as quickly, as painlessly as possible. Oh, I need to get out of here! <sighs> bitch. You have police protection. Nothing will happen to you. <sighs> Star, did you visit your father in the hospital after his arrest last November? Yes, eventually. Why did you go to see him? <sighs> Look, I need to speak with the DA. It's a matter of life and death. Star? Okay, take your time, honey, okay? Nora's in court. You're just gonna have to sit tight. Right. No, this is just a thought harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, of course it is. But you do understand why you're here, don't you? I mean, you understand that your father is on trial for plotting to kidnap your child, right? 
Yes. Okay, well, just, just keep that in mind when you answer. Look, this is why I didn't want to get involved with this in the first place. I went into hiding because there were people out there who wanted me dead. I took their life savings. I took everything they had, and now because of you all, I'm exposed. When you visited your father, what did you talk about? I asked him to tell me the truth. The truth? Okay. About what? Whether or not he was planning to kidnap my baby. The DA's office will take care of you. Nothing will happen. You should eat something. Are you hungry? I can't take that chance. And what did Todd respond when you asked him that? Star, did your father tell you that he intended to kidnap your child? Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live. On the next One Life to Live. Uh, I don't think Natalie's going to be too happy to see me. Don't worry, we're not going to kill each other. We're sisters. Did your father tell you that he planned to kidnap your child? 